22 H2 problems. Are they worth it though? Because look at this. Oh, glorious tabs in our file explorer. New cool looking task manager. Oh, look at that new performance. It just looks kind of cool, man. I love it. Oh, so good. But there is some downsides. So we need to get into the actual problems that 22H2 has because these are known issues from Microsoft. They fixed a lot of the stuff. So I'm not just going to pull up some news article like every other YouTuber does and they don't actually know how to actually check the, where those actually are. Let's actually get it from the horse's mouth. Oh, Microsoft, how are you doing with the problems of 22H2? So if you're unfamiliar with Windows and how it works, they actually have something, a knowledge base that constantly changes. Uh, they never don't ever link to anything over here because they will typically break. That's why I always take screenshots anytime I see something from Microsoft. But I digress. This is the release notes and known issues right now for Microsoft. This has changed drastically. On my website guide, I've taken screenshots of this. And it shows you how they've progressed and changed. I'm gonna do a quick little breakdown here of what we have. The biggest problem I've seen in 22H2 is the domain join process. This can be problematic. So if you're a business, don't upgrade to 22H2. I don't know any IT person that would be dumb enough to upgrade to 22H2 in a business setting unless you just hate yourself, which it, it happens, or maybe you just don't know any better and you're like a, a young guy just starting on the job. And you're like, hey, updates are great. Let's always update our system. It's what all those YouTubers tell you. <laughs> but uh, other than that, most businesses are smart enough to stay away from feature updates, at least for a year or two, while all these known issues start to get worked out. Big one, domain join. That could be really problematic for businesses, of course. SSL and TLS, this was a huge one. So if you updated sometime between, I think it was October 10th and October 22nd, and you haven't updated since, you'll still have this SSL TLS error. This means a lot of your sites you might do. I've gotten a lot of issues from my Windows tool saying, hey, it's not resolving this web page. That was because of a bad update from Windows. Also, if you're trying to do remote desktop and you're getting remote desktop errors from 22H2, you need to go update. This one did get resolved though. So as long as you're up to date, this was resolved at the end of October. So just past week, you will have uh, that working again with remote desktop. That was a very big one. Uh, in the initial run, you might have seen a couple other videos saying printers and some other knickknack stuff. I didn't really see anything that was like, oh, this is such a big deal. You know, uh, that, that could be a little bit problematic, but the big things were these top errors. And the other thing I, I'm looking at that also is, uh, I've been getting a lot of issues on my, my toolbox for, provisioning packages might not work as expected. Right now, that is still being investigated. This has been being investigated for over a month now. They still haven't been able to get to the bottom of it. Provision packages are Microsoft Store packages. So you're going to have failures from Microsoft Store for certain ones. The big one that pops in my mind is WinGet. I use WinGet a lot and Lately, it's been having a lot of bugs from Microsoft, so I might be moving to Chocolatey or Scoop uh, for a command line installer, but this is something to think about. If you are a big WinGet user, just know you might run into problems with provision packages. There are workarounds uh, that I'm going to start to institute and kind of force this through, completely circumventing most of the licensing and the Microsoft Store, of course. So that's a problem. Uh, some other articles referenced Windows Hello, as long as you're up to date, that got fixed pretty uh, pretty early in the update cycle. I think the first week or two of the preview release, that was a thing, but that got patched really quick. The other big thing is updates might fail with uh, Secure Boot DBX. This actually says investigating. I don't know if this has been updated yet, but I just saw a security update patch come through and these were just some of the bigger things that have happened in 22H2. Uh, when it comes down to it, the big thing I want to talk about is updates themselves. If you're into stability and reliability uh, on Windows, you need to be sticking with feature updates, usually for at least a couple of years. I would recommend not updating. Most people that are really into just having a very stable system will stay on like an older update. They may not may, may all the way be back in like 1903 or or 21H1, you know, probably right in there. They won't even be on a 22H2 or any modern feature update because 
these take a while to work through. So how updates work in Windows is they will slowly get through all these bug fixes. And when they fix a bug, chances are they might introduce a new bug. And the reason for this being is the code base for Windows is very old. And that's just something that happens. So when you're in here and you're punching around new things and, and maybe modding your system out, or installing new programs, a lot of times there's just not been very many people at it, especially at the very beginning of a release cycle like 22H2. So you're gonna run into more problems. So what's on the known issues page right here isn't all the issues. These are just certain issues that have been documented and they're working on fixing. And you can kind of see what the top priority is all the way down to the lowest priority. And that's typically how these known issues work but it does not mean there isn't even more issues than what's listed here, as is pretty much any update cycle with any operating system. It's just Microsoft itself has a bit more of a challenge than let's say a Linux or a Mac OS because its operating system is by far the oldest. A lot of times when they're going through, they're, they're working off a code base of 20 plus years old, and there's a lot more stuff in Windows that just has a chance to go completely wrong. So. That's why we wait. We always wait when it comes to updates on features if you care about stability. Now, obviously for me, I do YouTube videos. I need to be breaking my test environment here in the studio because I wanna be the first one to be hit with these bugs. I wanna be the first ones to see them so I can figure out workarounds. And also, I just kinda like to see some of the new features, which uh, as far as all the new features, my by far my favorite, is the new Win file explorer with the, the tabs. I think that's really important. I did find when I first updated to 28, 22H2, if we just do a Winver, you'll see how it's 22H2. This specific build has the tabs. The very first 22H2 install I did on Windows 11 didn't have the tabs. None of the installs of 22H2 on Windows 10 have any of these performance upgrades or these features, I should say. Almost Everything in 22H2 is aesthetics, perception. And, and perception is the epitome of how you feel about your system. If users like how it looks and how it feels, they're gonna have a good feeling about it, even if remote desktop doesn't work, even if your domain Jones don't work. Those types of uh, issues can be uh, overlooked just because of the perception of some of these features. So if these features interest you, by all means, go for it. I would say, I love these two things, even though they're completely artificial and just the look. But I will say the settings and the more that I look in Windows 11, I can appreciate that they are focusing more on the perception of Windows 11. And if I look back on Windows 10 and its settings menu, it was just a cobbled Metro mess. So at the end here, I'm gonna just say, is should you update to Windows 22H2? It has problems, yes, that's true. Any feature update will. Are they massive problems? Depends on what you're really using it for. Are you using it for remote desktop? Well, you're pretty much working through that. I think it, the, the worst is behind us. Are you using it for a business and you need a domain join? <laughs> Hell no, you shouldn't update if that's the, the case. But if you are just a hobbyist sitting in your home and you don't mind being a guinea pig here at the beginning so you can have a cool file explorer and a beautiful task manager, do it. What do you have to lose besides breaking your computer?